It's Tuesday, July 18th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And a Cessna 310R has gone down today on takeoff from Santa Fe's Municipal Airport, runway 20, in what appears to be a classic VMCA roll following an engine failure on takeoff in high density altitude conditions. Here's what we know so far. From the Aviation Safety Network, a Cessna 310R2, November 5251 Charlie, one fatality, only one occupant on board the aircraft. There were no fatalities on the ground. A Cessna 310R crashed into a home shortly after takeoff from Santa Fe Regional Airport, Santa Fe, New Mexico. The sole pilot died and the aircraft was destroyed. Preliminary information indicates that five November 5251 Charlie was instructed by ATC to turn left to make way for a regional airliner. Now, as we review the ATC audio tape, I don't believe that was exactly the case. That was on approach to Santa Fe. Witnesses reported seeing November 5251 Charlie roll and crash nose down into the house. Twins 5 1 Charlie, runway 2 0, right turns approved, clear for takeoff, winds gone. Clear for takeoff, 5 1 Charlie, thanks for calling. 5 1 Charlie's got an engine failure. And say again? 5 1 Charlie's got an engine failure. Okay, 5 1 Charlie, Roger, you make the left turn to runway 3 3. Roger, 5 1 Charlie. 5 1 Charlie, you're clear to land any runway you want, the winds are calm. I'm going to get some altitude. All right. 1051 Charlie, it's the one engine. One engine. Roger. 1051 Charlie, runway 33 is just off your left side. Uh, that might be the closest one for you. Two ways a little bit further to the north, but your choice. Crash rescue one appears the aircraft is down, but uh, well off the field, about uh, two miles off the approach end. I can't tell exactly where it is, but there's a large plume of smoke. The preliminary ADSB data is available here from FlightAware, showing the aircraft departing on runway 20 and starting a left-hand turn and crashing into a house right next to the freeway about two miles off the departure end of runway 20. Preliminary ADSB data on ground speed and altitude indicates the maximum altitude the aircraft reach on takeoff was 6,400 feet. The elevation of Santa Fe Municipal Airport is 6,349 feet. He reached a ground speed, an ADSB ground speed of 120 miles an hour and that speed decaying down to about 116 miles per hour and 6,000 feet at the end of the data, ADSB data from FlightAware. Here's a look at the Santa Fe Municipal Airport on Sky Vector. Field elevation, 6,349 feet. Longest runway, which I believe is runway 20, 8,300 feet of runway length. And here's the freeway near which the uh, aircraft crashed. The airport is surrounded by higher terrain, but located in relatively flat terrain near the airport. The METAR or weather report taken sometime after the accident at uh, 1753Z shows a temperature today there at Santa Fe at, of 93 degrees Fahrenheit or about 34 degrees Celsius with the winds out of the west-southwest at about eight miles per hour. Otherwise, good vil visibility, except for the density altitude, the hot temperatures. The 1978 Cessna 310R is powered by two Continental IO520 engines and has a nominal climb rate with two engines of at least 1,600 feet at max gross weight at sea level. With only one engine operating, it has a single engine climb rate at sea level max gross weight of just 370 feet per minute. At maximum gross weight, the aircraft has a single engine service ceiling of 7,400 feet. The single engine service ceiling being that ceiling which yields about a 50 foot per minute rate of climb. The Cessna 310R has a single engine 
best rate of climb speed of 106 knots indicated airspeed, about 121 miles per hour, and a VMCA speed of 80 knots, minimum controllable airspeed on one engine. Even though this 310 only had one pilot on board and was apparently a fairly lightweight aircraft, this pilot was struggling with density altitude, the hot temperatures, and the high elevation of the airport that he was departing from. With a barometric pressure on the airfield of 30.27 or so, that gives him a pressure altitude of just slightly less than the field elevation, call it about 6,000 feet. But the problem is the temperature at 90 degrees you come up this chart this way and hit the 6,000 foot pressure altitude, that gives you a density altitude just north of 9,000 feet. So the effective air that the aircraft is operating in is much thinner with warmer temperatures and the performance is about that of 9,000 feet. Remember the single engine service ceiling at max gross weight on a standard day is listed at 7,700 feet. Even with a temperature down to 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 degrees Celsius at a pressure altitude of 6,000 feet, that would still yield a density altitude of 8,500 feet. According to some very preliminary information from firefighters, they are indicating that it was the left engine that failed. But listening to the ATC audio tapes, there is no discussion as to which engine failed. And However, the aircraft was suggested by ATC that the shortest return to the airport after departing on runway 20 would be to do a left turn and return back here to runway 33. Now, if it was the left engine that failed and the pilot did elect to do a left-hand turn to return to the airfield to runway 33, if that was the left engine, that would mean he would have been turning into the left engine. That's something that's generally to be avoided in these uh, light twin engine propeller driven aircraft because of the left turning tendencies of the propeller driven aircraft and the uh, tendency to pull you over with the good engine operating on the right. Remember on a conventional light twin whose engines rotate clockwise as viewed from behind, the left engine is considered the critical engine because in the event of a loss of the left engine, the P-factor and torque from the right engine is going to give you a greater yawing moment into the dead engine. So in a light twin like the 310, it's critical that you get that dead engine feathered, get those propeller blades feathered into the wind to reduce the drag on that windmilling engine and to make sure the landing gear is up. Investigators will be looking at the condition of the aircraft and be able to quickly determine if that was the case in this accident. Many of us own and operate multi-engine light aircraft for the perceived safety of having two engines. However, if you box yourself into a situation where the density altitude meets or exceeds a safe single engine operating altitude for your aircraft, you have boxed yourself into a very dangerous situation, more dangerous than that of a single engine aircraft in the event of an engine failure. Thanks so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here. I uh, blocked my Charlie's got an engine failure. And take it. I blocked Charlie's got an engine failure. I think I went Charlie. Roger, you make the left turn to runway 33. Roger. I blocked Charlie. I went Charlie, you're clear to land any runway you want. The winds are calm. I blocked Charlie, I'm going to get some altitude. All right.